A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver. The Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you do it is a question, and here's one that have that happy people have to make. Hi there. This is the Lone Ranger speaking. Out here in the West, we have a couple of champions who are really doing okay. Champion Bob Maynard. He can grab a thousand-pound steer by the horns and toss it to the ground like it was a three-day-old calf. And bronc-busting champ Bob Burroughs. The way he can stick on a mean, sidewinding bronc, you'd think he was glued to the saddle. They're both great rodeo champions and both eat Wheaties. Have been ever since they were youngsters. That's a good example to follow. Keep on eating your Wheaties and you'll be doing okay. Okay. With his faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Away! Andy Jim Davenport and his gang of killers and train robbers had halted their horses at a fork on the Hatchet Creek Trail. The outlaw leader and Tack Miller, his second in command, remained in their saddles. The other four men moved around on foot, carefully examining the ground. Dandy was saying, Tack, I swore that I'd get the Lone Ranger if it's the last thing I ever did. That fella plugged me when I drew on him. Oh, so that's why you got a bum right on. Hey, Dandy, look here. Yeah, what is it, please? We cut the Lone Ranger's trail again. Lone Ranger can't be more than an hour ahead of us. What do you suppose the Lone Ranger's doing in this part of the country? Well, he might be looking for us, but I doubt it. He wanders all over. We've been careful about covering our tracks after our train job. Come on, fellas. Let's ride the masked man down. Uh, that's all right, take it easy, boys. We'll stay out of his sight while we trail him. Tonight, while he and the engine are camping, we'll close in for the kill. Ah, oh, savvy, Dandy. All right, get mounted, fellas. Easy there. Get it, come on. Get it, come on. As the outlaws took the Lone Ranger's trail, he and Tonto rode toward Hatchet Creek. For several weeks, they had been searching in vain for some trace of Dandy Jim and his gang. Wholly unaware that they, the hunters, were being hunted, they discussed the outlaws. Kimasabi. Why do you think Dandy Jim gang hide in Sierra foothills? There have been three train holdups around here recently. In each case, the bandit leader was described as wearing fancy clothes and having a stiff right arm. Oh, that sound like Dandy Jim. Yes, it was my bullet that crippled his arm several years ago. He had killed a trainman and had tried to kill me. Oh, me remember. Me thought him sure to hang. He cheated justice. He always cheated it. His ability to beat his cases in court has encouraged crime throughout the West. It must be stopped. Well, what our old friend Sheriff Hubble say when you talked to him in Cartersville last night? The sheriff is a relentless manhunter, but he's only able to think of one thing at a time. Right now, he's searching for an escaped convict. I couldn't interest him in Dandy Jim. Uh, who the convict? 
A young man named Hal Perry. Uh, Perry come from this part of country? He lived on a ranch several miles below the point where this trail crosses Hatchet Creek. His wife and child still live there. Sheriff Hubble has been watching the place. Uh, you see Creek now. Water looked plenty high. There's been a cloud burst in the mountains. That high water may hamper us in hunting for Dandy Jim and his gang. We hear noise like waterfall. There's a cataract in the creek where the water falls a hundred feet. Oh, here, creek bank. Who's over who? From their saddles, the Lone Ranger and Toto surveyed the flood swollen creek. A wide stretch of tawny water raced to the cataract, tumbling over jagged rocks. Nearby, a tall redwood had been felled so that it spanned the creek and served as a crude footbridge. Along one side of the trunk, a sagging rope provided a handhold for anyone who crossed. Toto turned to the masked man. How oh, we cross creek with horses? The current's too swift for Silver and Scout. There may be quieter water below the falls. Look, Kimosabe. Boy, come out and log from other side. Jackie, where are you? Here I am, Daddy. Wait for me. Don't try to cross the log alone. I'm waiting. Halfway across the footbridge, the boy stopped and took hold of the guide rope with both hands. Then he leaned far out and looked down at the snarling flood. Don't do that, lad. The rope may break. Hardly had the masked man shouted his warning when the rope, rotted by long exposure to the weather, snapped. The boy fell headlong from the log. At the same instant, a man broke from the brush on the opposite bank. Jackie! I'll go after him, steady big fella. Flinging himself from the saddle, the Lone Ranger rid himself of his boots and gun belt in a flash. Then he ran out on the log. Hello! Bring your lariat out here. Uh, be coming with it. As the Lone Ranger and the man from the other bank reached the middle of the footbridge, the youngster bobbed up ten yards downstream. There's my boy. I can't swim. Save him. I'll try. After his dive, the masked man fought his way to the surface of the cold, swirling torrent. He came up close to Jackie. The boy had been hurled into a cleft between two rocks. But the savage current threatened to dislodge him at any moment. There he is. You're on your right. I see him. Fitting all his strength against the flood, the Lone Ranger managed to reach the center of the current. <laughs> then he let it carry him toward the rocks where the boy lay. He knew that if he missed them, he would be swept over the brink of the cataract. Grab my boy. Grab him. The Lone Ranger caught hold of one of the rocks just as Toto cast the loop of his lariat from the log. As the rope settled on the water near at hand, the masked man grabbed it with his free hand. I have it. Then he let loose of the rock and threw an arm around the youngster, lifting his head above the water. Pull, Toto, pull. Close to shore. Aided by the boy's father, Toto pulled in the rope. As it shortened, they moved to the bank where the horses stood. A few seconds later, the Lone Ranger and the boy were on the shore. You had a narrow escape, Jackie. You both did, mister. I reckon that you're an owl who'd but it doesn't matter to me. I'll never be able to pay off the debt I owe you. Any man able to swim would have gone to Jackie's rescue. But my mask doesn't mean I'm an outlaw. Where do you live, mister? I have a shack across the creek. I'll take Jackie there. Daddy, I want to go home to Mother. I don't like that old shack. Why do you stay there? As the father hesitated, the Lone Ranger and Toto exchanged knowing glances. Toto will take Jackie to his mother at the ranch, uh, Al Perry. Why? Why'd you say that? I know who you are. Well, don't say anything in front of Jackie. He doesn't know. You'll never find out through me. Now I'll take that gun you have in your pocket. I'll take it. Let's not have any trouble. I have, to have it. I want to go home. Uh, Toto will take you on his horse. He's a good Indian. Don't be afraid of him. Shucks, I'm not afraid of Indians. Your daddy may be going away again. Have you got a kiss for me? Oh, of course. I wish you wouldn't go. Steady, Scout. Steady, Panna. Well, me ready now. Better you hand boy up. Here you go, son. <laughs> there you are. Hold tight. Oh, him be all right. Goodbye, Jackie. Say goodbye for me to your mother. Bye, Daddy. Get him up, Scout. Well, mister, I suppose you intend to turn me over to the sheriff. You uh, broke out of prison. I wanted to see my wife and boy. You seem to think a lot of Jackie. Mister, you better think of yourself. You're cold. Come along to the shack where I've been hiding. I'll build a fire. Very well. I have other clothes and an extra mask in my bedroll. I'll get them and change it to your hideout. A little later, the Lone Ranger followed his prisoner across the log. After a short walk through brush and boulders, they approached a log hut. Perry was saying, We're actually on an island here. The 
flood's broken through low ground, putting a current on all sides of us. If the water continues to rise, it'll soon be over this high ground. <laughs> it doesn't matter to me now. Well, here we are. Harry, I don't like to send you back to prison, but you owe a debt to society. Mister, I didn't get a square deal. Jury found guilty of second-degree murder, and a judge sentenced me to a life term. You uh, killed a gambler. Yeah. I beat the crooked tin horn to the draw. Now, uh, let me light that wood in the fireplace. While you're doing that, keep your face turned away from me. I'm going to change to a dry mask. The Lone Ranger had changed all of the things he wore and had warmed himself when Tonto joined him and Perry in the hut. The Indian explained, Me give boy to mother, Kimasabi, yes. and her plenty glad. And then me come back. After me hide horses, me cross bridge, find shack. Is the ranch house being watched? Me meet sheriff and deputy in woods close by. Oh. Me not tell them about Perry. Me not know what you plan. Well, there's only one thing for us to do. That's to turn him over to the sheriff. Are you ready, Perry? Yeah, but please arrange it so my son doesn't know. We'll do that. Now, let's go. Oh, wait, Kimasabi, yes. wait. From window, you see fella crawl to rock on the hillside. They're firing on the hut. There'd be a posse after me. Hold your fire, you fellas out there. What do you want? We want you, Lone Ranger. This is a payoff for shooting me. That's Dandy Jim. The gang has trailed us. Kimasabi, him grab us and trap. <laughs> We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Boxer Ben fights hard and fair. So in the ring, you kids beware. He's dynamite because he knows. He's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Cheerios, the cereal everybody loves. No other cereal looks like Cheerios. It's shaped like little letter O's. No other cereal tastes like Cheerios. It's the only ready-to-eat cereal with this fresh toasted oat flavor. No other cereal is like Cheerios. You see, Cheerios is made from oats. And every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. Have Cheerios every morning. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue... The Lone Ranger, Toto, and Hal Perry, and escaped convict, had been trapped in a shack by Dandy Jim and his gang of killers. Toto, help me knock some loopholes through the chinking. While the five rifles in the rocks continued to blaze at the window, the masked man and Indian hammered at the chinking in the cabin walls. There, me got one hole made. I'll soon have another one here beside the fireplace. Crouching, the Indian peered through his slot. Jim, sorry. Fella just run from behind the hut. I get a glimpse of him. My loophole is finished. Listen. What's that noise? A burning fuse. Oh. Last block of the hut. Although the walls held, splinters, embers from the dying fire, and stones and chunks of mortar from the fireplace showered the room. One stone struck the Lone Ranger's head. When the dust cleared, Toto saw the masked man lying on the floor. Kimasami! Lone Ranger's hurt. Perry, what for attack? Me ten friend. How's your friend? Him knocked out. Me bandaged head. Soon him be all right. Look, Tano. That outlaw went away. He's coming back. And carry two big cans of powder. Oh, let's make a break for it. We not get far carrying friend. It's twilight now. I'll put on the Lone Ranger's clothes to the dry. His white hat and extra mask. Then I'll make a run for it. The owl hoots are bound to think I'm the Lone Ranger. You get killed, Pronto. I expect it. But I'll give him a run first. While they're chasing me and shooting, you carry your friend away and hide him. Me savvy, but me not let you do it. No? Well, I'm holding this gun on you. Drop yours. Uh, me do it. Now I'll kick it over by the door. That takes care of the gun. 
Now go over in the far corner and lie face down the floor. Keep your hands behind you. You understand? Me, yes, savvy. Now I'll put on the Lone Ranger's clothes and that spare mask. It was a few minutes later when Tack Miller yelled, Hey, look there. The Lone Ranger's outside the shack. Bandy Jim and the other four outlaws who had been busy fixing fuses to the powder cans sprang to their feet, Winchesters in hand. Plug him, Tack. Now hold it. He's my meat. Don't anyone shoot until I get a crack at him. Ah, oh, you missed him, Dandy. He's getting away. Dandy Jim hurled the rifle against the rock. After him, boys. He's all yours now. Kill him. Come on, boys. He's almost to the bridge. I'll drop him this time. Standing still, Tack took careful aim at the fleeing man and fired. You got him, Tack. He's down. Gathering around their victim, the outlaw stared at him in silence for a moment. Take off his mask. Yeah, right. Here it comes off. So that's the Lone Ranger. Andy, is he anyone you ever saw without a mask on? No, he's a stranger to me. Well, maybe he left something in the shack that'll tell his name and explain his connections. We'll have to go back after the powder anyhow, so let's take a look in the shanty. All right, we'd better hurry. Crick may be all over everything a little while. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger had recovered consciousness in a patch of undergrowth to which Toto had carried him. As his head cleared and his strength came back, Toto told him what had happened. After them run down by Crick, me hear one shot. Outlaws not make any more noise. One shot? That probably means that they killed the poor fellow. Look, outlaws come back. Yes, they're going into the hut. Dandy Jim, another fellow, wait outside. We have a chance to turn the tables on them. Well, how we do that? We not catch them in shack. No, but the rising water will soon dry them off the island. We'll have to cross the creek on the log. Mm, that right. The log is hidden from the shack by trees and bushes. It'll be easy to reach it without being seen. we a surprise on there. Come on. Uh. A few minutes later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto were on the creek bank. There they came upon Hal Perry. The Indian exclaimed, uh, I'm dead. Let's make sure. I'm shot in the back. <clears throat> Turn them over. <clears throat> Here, mask. Good. Uh. Him a sabi. He feel faint heartbeat. All right, take his shoulders. I'll take his feet. We'll carry him to the other bank. Uh. Safe on the other side of the turbulent creek, the Lone Ranger and Tottle concealed themselves and the wounded fugitive behind a screen of willows. I hear the outlaws coming. Is this the place where we left the Lone Ranger's body? Yeah, this is it. What up? He isn't here now. Then he wasn't dead, but he was hit too hard to go far. He must have crawled across the log. He has more lives than a cat. We'll find him. we we'll be too. Lead the way, Danny. Watch out of you slip on this log. I'm right behind you, Danny. Teetering on the high heels of their boots, the outlaws moved out on the slippery log in single file. They had their arms extended, balancing themselves. As they reached the middle of the makeshift bridge, the Lone Ranger burst from cover with guns leveled. Hold it, men. You're covered. Look, it's him. Frozen by fright and surprise at the sight of a masked man who was armed and apparently unhurt, the outlaws halted. Keep your hands up. He caught us like birds on a fence tree. Hey, don't shoot us, mister. Now I'll let you come across one at a time. You're in the lead, Dandy Jim. Come on. Otto, stand ready to disarm him. I'm here ready. Are you coming, Dandy Jim? The place is with you. The dandified gang leader made a grab for his gun with his left hand. At the same time, he tried to get around and behind Tack Miller, the second in the row. Tack yelled. Hey, don't push me. Let me pass. Stop, Dandy. The masked man followed up his command with a warning shot. The whining bullet only added to Dandy Jim's desperation. In an effort to save himself from being pushed into the creek by the gang leader, Tack dropped to his knees, then straddled the log. Dandy clawed at him. Tack doubled a fist and howled. Get back, Dandy. You're trying to both of us. I want to get by. Tack's fist shot upward, sinking into Dandy's midriff. The gang leader toppled from the log with a yell. Hello, keep the others covered. Uh, the Lone Ranger scanned the madly racing flood for some sign of Dandy Jim. Nothing appeared except his fancy hat, which spun like a top in the current, then vanished over the cataract. Are you other outlaws ready to obey orders? I'll come as soon as I get back on my feet. We'll all come across as fast as you let us.
Later, when night had fallen but a full moon was up, the Lone Ranger and Toto arrived at the Perry Ranch house with the wounded fugitives and surviving members of the hold-up gang. Perry lay on a dragging litter, which Toto had fashioned from a blanket and two poles. The poles were attached to scout-like buggy shafts. The ends below the blanket trailed on the ground. As the masked man halted the prisoners, who had been marching in single file with their hands clasped behind their necks, Sheriff Hubble and a deputy rushed out of the nearby woods to investigate. What in condition is going on? Sheriff, here is Dandy Jim Davenport's gang. Why, it's you, mister. You've cut those owl hoots while I've been sitting around here like a bump in a log. Where's Dandy Jim? Attack Miller knocked him into the creek. He went over the cataract. We found his body later. Who's Tonto got there? Hal Perry. So you captured him, too, huh? What, uh, what ails him? The outlaws wounded him badly. Huh? Is that you, Sheriff Hubbard? Oh, yes, it's Mrs. Perry. You would uh, better come here. All right. Come with Mother, Jack. Oh, there's Daddy on that blanket. What? Hal? What? Is he? Is he? No, no, Mrs. Perry. Oh. He's not dead. There's a good chance that he'll recover. Daddy, you come home. Jackie, my boy. My boy. Mm, now me sure him get all right. Please don't take him away. He isn't in shape to be moved. Let me keep him here. Well, that's what I aim to do, ma'am. Of course, I'll have to leave a deputy to keep watch. Later on... Later on, he may get a full pardon. I intend to take his case to the governor. But he's a killer the same as these train robbers. I believe that he's been punished enough. Moreover, he saved the lives of my friend and me and made it possible for us to capture the robbers. I reckon that will carry a lot of weight with the governor. I hope so. Mother, there's the man with the mask who got me out of the water. Yes, Jackie. Mister, how can I ever thank you for what you've done? You needn't thank me. My friend and I owe your husband a great deal. As soon as we reach town, we'll send a doctor here. <laughs> now we're even, mister. Uh, here, deputy. Let's unhook that stretcher and tote Perry into the house. All right, Jack. See, mash man, watch who's out, who, Jim. They'll not get away. Sheriff Hubble and his aide were soon back. The sheriff reported. Perry's in bed and he's resting easy. Good. His wife is looking after him, but it's that youngster who's going to bring him out of it. Even so, Tonto and I had better ride hard for a doctor. Are you ready, Kimosabe? Uh-huh. Me ready. Hey, but hold on. You've a handsome reward coming from Wells Fargo for those Al Hooch. Give it to Hal Perry, Sheriff. He's easy to be coming. Now, adios. Adios, sweetheart. Sheriff, I told Andy Jim to forget that masked man. Uh, listen, fella. No one ever forgets the Lone Ranger. Copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to The Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.